First, a family's chilling encounter with a neo-Nazi group. They were camping at a popular tourist spot outside Melbourne when they came face to face with white supremacists. Here's what happened. Do you think you're safe out in the bush with your kids? Tonight, a neo-Nazi camp prompts police action as officers sound the alarm on far-right extremism. They were impressing upon us very strongly that these were dangerous people. The Mother's Day weekend in the tiny town of Taggarty, two hours' drive from Melbourne. Families are setting up camp in the rolling hills of the Cathedral Range State Park and joining them a bunch of white supremacists. Quite a few families left. They were quite scared about what they had seen. This Melbourne mother was camping with her 14-year-old son just 50 metres away. And that's when I saw that they had a really big Nazi flag hanging from a tree. And that really frightened me. To ensure her safety, we're protecting her identity. We'll call her Janet. There was a really big trailer that was emblazoned with a lot of fairly offensive what I would call right-wing slogans. No more f**ks. There was the swash sticker on there as well. The trailer belonged to the same group a current affair reported on earlier this year, prompting leader Thomas Sewell to react with what police allege was a vicious assault on a Channel 9 security guard in Melbourne. <laughs> The 28-year-old was on bail over that March incident when, on May 8, police say he was among a mob of 15 masked men who kicked and punched a stranger's car in the state park. Detectives claim a hiker began recording the group from inside his car when it's alleged Mr Sewell smashed a window and knives were thrust into the vehicle. Two of the six alleged victims handed over their phones and escaped. When we returned to the campground itself, there were an awful lot of police, both in uniform and um, plain clothes. They were very concerned, they were very friendly, but they certainly did impress upon us a number of times that if we chose to leave, we would be justified in doing so. Almost a week after the campsite incident, in the pre-dawn darkness, Heavily armed tactical officers spilled out of an armoured van using a megaphone to order Thomas Sewell out of his home here in Roeville in Melbourne's southeastern suburbs. Inside his bedroom, police say they uncovered hunting knives and an axe, as well as a pair of knuckle dusters stashed in his car. Mr Sewell's recent bid to be freed on bail again was denied after a counter-terrorism detective told a Melbourne court officers were concerned about his increasingly erratic and volatile behaviour, with the former soldier willing to use violence against anyone he perceives to be his enemy, putting the community at large at risk. That's despite Mr Sewell's lawyer arguing the case against him was weak and likely to run to trial. Detectives say the National Socialist Network and newer European Australian movement have a network of 40 associates, with Mr Sewell exerting influence over members from inside these prison walls. Officers say in these phone conversations, Mr Sewell is ordering followers to gather evidence on the campsite victims. It's so important for you guys to keep researching and keep investigating. The most important thing is for you guys to be looking over witness statements. There's interesting little clues in there. This latest incident comes as police become increasingly anxious about far-right extremists. In the weeks following our first story, Queensland and Adelaide police raided National Socialist followers, charging one man with possessing an improvised explosive device. Well, all the evidence shows us that the threat is growing. Associate Professor Deborah Smith from Victoria University is one of the country's leading extremism experts. One way the threat can manifest is, of course, in those terrible acts of violence that sometimes happen, um, events like Christchurch. And there's also another manifestation of this threat, which is what the far right would refer to as the long game or the long war. In this scenario, what the, the broader goal, if you like, is, is to really undermine um, democracy as a whole. 
As an advisor to law enforcement, Associate Professor Smith has interviewed convicted extremists. And there is no silver bullet. There is no one thing that we can do that can actually resolve this problem. A current affair has obtained one group's leaked manual intended for vetted members and it paints a disturbing picture. The 112-page document instructs extremists how to conceal their identities and avoid police detection, all while spreading their racist propaganda. Of course we need uh, policing. We also need to look at how can we intervene early with people. How can we actually find people who are involved in the fringes of these movements and to work with them, case manage them, in order to disengage them from the movement before they get to the point where they're going to end up in prison or dead. Thomas Sewell remains behind bars ahead of his next court appearance in a month.